Hi. In this slide, I want to answer the question uh, which I raised at the beginning of the customer niche economics sec section about what's a profit pool anyway. Uh, so it's sort of cleaning things up, and I just thought I should keep my promises. Uh, oh, I don't know. Back in the late 90s, a consulting firm invented the concept of profit pool. And what they wanted to do is look at all the profits that, that uh, were made additively along the points of an industry value chain. And in those days, the curiosity really was, why did the Wintel duopoly, in other words, Windows and Intel, control, make about 85, 90% of all the profits made the entire you know, personal computer uh, industry supply chain? Because they both had monopolies on what they did. Everybody else was you know, sort of the commodity business. Then they said, well, okay, let's, let's zoom in. Instead of looking at the entire industry, let's look within a group of rivals. So there was a time back in the late 90s when Dell might have had 30% share of all PCs sold in the world, or America, pick some area. But they really had about 100% of the profit pool because nobody else was making any money on PCs. H. Hewlett Packard at the time had a similar market share, but they didn't have any profits in their their uh, uh, their, business, their PC business. So the idea was, well, if we know where all the money's being made on a profit basis, then couldn't we target the pro profits? And then the people said, well, not really, because the people who, like the people like Dell, who are already there and making the money, that's because they were innovative pioneers and said, let's make our computers on a just-in-time basis, ship them directly to the end user. Let's not make them for retail channels where we have inventory sitting, losing value 7% a year because that's how fast the technology is changing, eroding the costs or dropping. Um, and then let's hook uh, corporate internet sites in 1994 so people all over the planet from Ford can buy you know, their PCs preloaded with Ford software and so forth, more than you need to know. But the point is they, they, they innovated to be able to have that kind of profitability. So you could say, well, all right, I'm going after the profits. Well, then you have to sort of mimic their business model, but they're already there. So if you want to dislodge them, you've got to be prepared to outgun them at great expense, more than three to one to try to dislodge them. And basically, all you're really doing is creating a me too, and now I've got a lower price margin attrition war. Now, the other thought is, well, okay, if there's that kind of money to be made, is it possible to leapfrog, come with a whole new value proposition uh, with a different business model that's going to allow me to steal that volume and, and make that kind of money? Um, but that's a, that's an innovative business model uh, scenario, and it's it's almost like starting a business up from scratch and may or may not exist. Now, I will say that Walmart, in selling brands for less, will target the most super profitable items in a line that's a uh, umbrella priced item. So for example, if you look at 50 ounce bottle of Listerine on a Walmart shelf, right next to it is Equate, a Walmart private label store brand. So you take what the, the brand is to, to, to literally, and you turn the labels around and you equate the labels and you realize they're exactly the same ingredients, but equates 80% less than Listerine. Well, why would the manufacturer of Listerine be charging such a high price? Well, they've got legacy, you know, business model. They've got unfunded union pensions. They've got a hundred items in their lines that are being cross subsidized that don't don't work. And all Walmart's doing is knocking off the absolute, you know, most profitable thing to be able to to uh, still make money at eighty percent less. So, if you have huge cross subsidies in your product portfolio, someone's going to come along and target only your most profitable items and offer them the same brand for less or a, a clone for even less than less. Uh, so that's a, that's a, something to watch, watch out for. So now the question is how to catch or get dominant share of a profit pool. And the answer is, well, you have to target some niche and innovate best value for that niche. Uh, now, you can go see people who've done that and said, well, what's the process of how they targeted, they determined a niche, targeted it, and went after it? And that's what I've done in this last section. I've said, here are sort of prescriptive uh, steps that you can do to find out what your own historic best profitable niche is. 
and assuming that other competitors haven't done the same drill, then it's a possibility for you to reinvent your value proposition in a very narrow focus sense, not just on a niche, but the 555 leverage accounts within the niche, and in a sense, dominate the pool because everybody else is too busy being a decathlete. So what we have to finally, in our case, what we're doing is saying the profit pool isn't being supplied to an industry value chain. We're not even looking necessarily at rivals as far as selling all kinds of PCs. We're looking at niches within the industry. So if we're looking at a niche within a local uh, geographic market for a given branch um, and, and how the rival distributors are doing in that niche, we're really doing it in the most narrow sense. And we have to then ask, well, is the opportunity for niche-specific strategy still available in branch 16? And I would say 99% of the time it is because most distributors are still pushing any product to anybody to get volume focused on financial numbers as opposed to service value math going after a particular niche. The second question is, does the opportunity exist for taking accounts where you have lose-lose math because they have high cost to serve and high total procurement cost because they're really since dysfunctional buyers and, and helping them to see that there's a better way that you can both do business together to convert it to win-win and uh, through buy-sell process tuning. I th again, I think the answer is yes. I, very few distributors have customer profitability analytics where they've gone beyond just saying, I can't believe my best customer is my biggest loser. Let's throw this out and just keep doing what we've always done. So I would say the odds are 99% yes, that you can actually pursue the prescription I've offered here in this, this segment on customer nicheonomics. Um, and then lastly, this point down here to capture, tune, and then co-create maximum value for customer, uh, profits for both, uh, profits for, for us, um, there are two, two dimensions of it. One is improvement. In other words, if I went out and said to a customer, oh, I get last look. No, I don't. I get last look plus one point for me and one point from the horse I'm riding. I've, I've improved my margin. If I sneak my margins up with smart pricing and nothing happens, I just get a little bit higher price. I've improved my profits. But if I go to the bottom 1% of my customers who are destroying 20% or more of my peak internal profits, and I say, hey, there's a better way, and we switch how we do business, so the 20% losses disappear, and actually it's replaced with 5% return on sales. That's a delta swing of 25 percentage points, and they get 20, 30, 40% more share as a happy byproduct of being in there and working more closely with the customer. Now, that's a turnaround, and I would consider that um, development of operating profit, where basically we're taking lose-lose supply chain friction and working with our customers together to mine that and split that in a sense and both do better, be better off. So that's, that's not only improvement, but development. And uh, we can do that, but we have to be proactive as opposed to just reacting to whatever the customer wants and let them all buy the way they want to buy, for better or worse. We have to be proactive and we have to have service value sol solution selling skills. So that's the uh, profit pool story. Thank you.